What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours, we do have a lot of topics to discuss. Firstly, we've been linked with three top players in Bruno Fernandes, Luis Diaz, and Kingsley Coleman, who apparently Hansi Flick really wants at Barcelona. We'll discuss their current situation, whether or not that's actually a possibility of them coming to Barcelona this summer. Secondly, Deco is a huge fan of the pivot from Valencia, Javi Guerrera, and is making big moves to sign him. And also, he wants to sack off now, signing with Rodriguez entirely of course his preview with barcelona now has officially expired he is free to go negotiate with any other club or he can sit and wait for barcelona who are still interested in him but not really fully pursuing him but one big decision has been made over the past 24 hours and that's on the future of the joao's according to multiple reports barcelona wants to keep both of them under certain conditions of course another loan uh with the buy option a uh, very low transfer fee the club are really pushing for both joao's to say apparently hansi flick is very keen on joao cancelo staying as well so we have those updates we also have future updates on arujo and de jong who've spoken in the media about their contract renewals and speaking on contract renewals the current renewal of sergio roberto isn't looking too good for him. He is very, very close to not renewing his contract and leaving the club this summer. We have some updates on that. And finally, big updates on Hansi Flick's preseason plan in regards to the physicality of the, of the squad, uh, increasing it, reducing the leaks in the team as well, and also what he wants to do with Mikhail Faye and Alex Vai in preseason as well but before we get into it make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's check out the 200 likes in this video be very much appreciated also if you're new make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it let's start off with the transfer news over the past 48 hours now firstly i want to discuss some big name players that have been linked with barcelona some of them random some of them make sense but i want to kind of combine them all very very quickly because to be honest i think all of them are very very unlikely but we'll go through it firstly is Luis Diaz. Now we know for a fact that Barcelona liked the players. Juan Laporta liked him from his Porto days and Deco is a big fan of the player. There are reports coming in from the Liverpool press saying that Barcelona are considered to be the front runners right now to sign Luis Diaz. Now that's of course if Bus and Mays, if Liverpool want to sell, if Barcelona can, you know, uh, strike an agreement so to speak. Good player, but you know, I think this past season, like I've been mentioning, he's been quite inconsistent. A lot of injuries over the past year and a half, two years as well that have been kept him out for quite some time. I mean, I wouldn't spend over 40 million on him, and of course, I think Nico Williams is absolutely clear of him, but we know for a fact that he is a top winger on his day and that he does like the move to Barcelona. His father is a massive Barcelona fan, has been saying it a lot in the media as well so keep your eyes on it but i think any developments over the next month are very very unlikely now from one left winger to another this one makes a bit more sense but again kind of on the same parameters it is kingsley coleman now build in germany of course now that's having a german manager build in germany gonna be talking about barcelona a lot they've come out saying that hansi flick wants kingsley coleman at barcelona the club is strongly interested in signing him and Bayern munich will sell him if a suitable offer arrives on his day fantastic player when that day comes it's rarely i would compare the situation of kingsley coleman to uzman dembele when he plays he's great but he barely plays he's a very 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 injury prone player depends on the price i mean if i think if i'm not mistaken he has two years left on his deal with uh Bayern munich i'll just check that now quickly as we keep on discussing but again he's a player that you know shines quality we've linked with him a lot over uh recent years as well it's kind of actually expires in 2027 so ain't no way this is happening he's has he's a quite a long-term deal uh for the next three seasons so getting out of Bayern munich is going to be very very difficult especially when they you know rate him highly but again the injuries are going to be the main concern for me with Kingsley Coleman. In terms of the pure winger profile, I like it. I think he's, of course, very good. But again, with those injuries, it does, you know, raise a few question marks. So we'll wait and see how things do develop if Barcelona are interested. Now, from wingers to midfielders, Alex, the final, you know, big name player that's been linked with Barcelona is Bruno Fernandes. According to reports in Portugal, Barcelona is showing some strong interest in the services of Bruno Fernandes as well as by Munich. Now, Bernard has already confirmed that he's going to stay at United, that he wants to stay at uh, Manchester. He's, of course, the captain of the team. I would not take Bruno Fernandez at Barcelona, especially for the price that Man United are probably going to quote for him. I would say in upwards of 70 to 80 million. They spent 50 million on him uh, a few Januarys ago, I think 2019 or 2020. He's, you know, one of their best players on paper. He's kind of the only lifeline they have in the squad. But 
we are fine for midfielders. You have Pedri, you have Gavi, you have De Jong, you have Gundogan, and also you have your boy Fermin Lopez. So there is no need to sign Bruno, uh, Bruno Fernandes. The only area that we need to strengthen in the midfield is the pivot. We can keep everything else the exact same, in my opinion, unless we get some, you know, stellar deal. And also, you're gonna potentially maybe bring in Xavi Simons on loan, who can do the uh, play the role of Bruno Fernandes. So I would stay well, well clear. I think the only way I'd consider Bruno is if he, of course. He's going to be on a free transfer. We're a free transfer. You can just take the risk and, you know, you more high the player's profile than you do the suitability of the team. But he's not going to be a free agent for me. I would stay well clear of this. Now, of course, the main priority for Barcelona in the upcoming summer transfer window is to reinforce the pivot position. We do have a few updates where Barcelona are making some moves in this area. Quickly, I want to show you guys some quotes from Joshua Kimmich, who has been linked with Barcelona a lot over the past year and a half, and even more so with Hansi Flick coming in. He was asked on his future with Bayern Munich in the media. He said, look, it does not depend on me. What does the club want? FC Bayern Munich remains our first point of contact. Hustle take place about my future. I still have one more year left on my contract. Again, making it very clear that his first choice is to stay at Bayern Munich. If they cannot reach an agreement, the doors might potentially open. I think we're looking closer, by the way, to a Joshua Kimmich free transfer next summer than we are this summer. I think, again, with the options that we're going to talk about in a few seconds, you have, you know, Kimmich, probably Bayern Munich going to ask around 40 to 50, maybe even 60 million euros for him. Just doesn't make sense whatsoever. But on a free transfer, again, like I just mentioned about Bruno Fernandes, you highlight the player's quality, more so his suitability to the team. He's free, no risk. I think then the door might be open, but again, we'll wait and see what happens with Kimmich. Now, in regards to the current pivot position right now at Barcelona, of course, we tried, to, we tried to already sign someone in Guido Rodriguez, and now it looks like the pursuit for Guido Rodriguez is slowly but surely dying. Fernando Polo of Mundo Portivo has come out saying that Barcelona's pursuit of Guido Rodriguez faces a snag as the agreement between the player and the club has now officially expired, which had, of course, a deadline of May 31st. Now the footballer is free to negotiate with any other team. However, talks could resume pending La Liga's confirmation of Barcelona's salary cap for next season. I believe in the next week or so, we're going to figure out what our salary cap is for next season, which hopefully will increase to around, I think, 500 million, according to what the reports were uh, a few days ago. But again, right now, Guido Rodriguez, has, his, his pre agreement with Barcelona has expired, so he can go and negotiate with any other side in the world. Apparently, Atletico Madrid showing some interest in the player. But now, apparently, Barcelona is shifting focus to Javi Guerrera of Valencia. Luis Rojo of Marca came out saying that Barcelona have frozen the Guido Rodriguez operation for the moment and are now focusing on Javier Guerrera. His transfer fee would be around 20 to 25 million euros. Napoli is also interested in him and of course Deco is a big admirer of the player. I want to make this very clear. Barcelona are not in a position right now to invest in young talents and hope they grow. We need big players right now. This, for me, makes no sense. He had one good season with Valencia. Yes, is he a good profile? Yes, but we're not in a position to take risk. You have Marc Casado, who you're already renewing his contract. Marc Bernal played unbelievably well last night for Barca Athletic against Ibiza in the uh, qualification uh, first leg. Sensational. You have these options already internally, so why are you going to go out on the market and spend money on someone with a very similar profile as well? If we're going to spend money this summer, I have to reiterate this. We need to spend it on top players, on players who are good right now that can go into that first team right now. Not wannabes, not players who have, you know, uh, great potential. We're not in a position. Madrid just won the Champions League and they're about to sign fucking Mbappe. We do not have room or maneuvering or any risk to go and sign players like this. I'd rather honestly spend that 20 million on Joel Cancelo. We'll talk about Joel Cancelo in a few seconds. I'd rather spend that 20 million on, you know, a Nico Williams or even a Denny Olmo. We need players that are going to fit into this team right now. You want to invest, you want to, you know, uh, highlight youngsters. You already got some in-house. Again, Mark Bernal. You have Casado players. You have also Gilly Fernandez, who isn't, of course, a pivot, but can play in the midfield and you already have options as well that can combat that as well if we do it we do it i'll you know we'll see how it turns out but for me personally i do not agree with it i'd honestly rather sign with rodriguez on a free just having some experience in the squad than go and spend 20 million on javi guerrera again hopefully he's not the main if, if we're signing javi guerrera instead of with rodriguez okay fine that makes sense but again i would rather use that money elsewhere but if we have all of a sudden money to spend then sure whatever but again i want it's gonna be all gonna be depending on what the end goal 
is going to be. But for me personally, you have the youth players in-house that you can already bet on that will cost you nothing to bet on that are playing brilliantly well as well. Why go and waste, you know, 20, 30 million on someone who's going to be, be doing the exact same thing, the exact same profile? For me, it makes no sense. But if the club really have, you know, high hopes for him and high expectations, then we'll see how things turn out. As I think it's going to be one of Javier Herrera, uh, Javi Guerrera or Guido Luis. I don't think we're going to sign both. If they want to sign, you know, one of those two plus a top pivot, sure but again that 20 million i feel like could be used uh smartly elsewhere but we'll wait and see how things turn out but for now it looks like barcelona are really pursuing and really focusing on javi guerrera of valencia as their current objective in the pivot position now one of the biggest news around barcelona over the past 24 hours has been the news on the future of the two joao's in the last transfer video i told you guys that a decision is going to be coming and now the decision has been made from Barcelona. Fernando Polo of Mundo Deportivo has come out saying that Barcelona want to keep both Joao Cancelo and Joao Felix for next season. This is maintained even with the change of coach. The club would prefer another loan without any inventory or obligation to buy for both operations. Cancelo does not want to return to Man City or go to Saudi Arabia. Barcelona could try a new loan or a permanent signing as long as the transfer fee is well below 25 million euros. It will not be an, uh, an easy operation though. With Joao Felix, he does not want to return to Atletico Madrid either and considers Barcelona as an ideal place for him. In addition, both of them have incentive to play at the new Spotify account now as Barca players. <sighs> of course. Let's now discuss this. Now, firstly, on Joao Felix. Again, I've been saying this on the channel a lot. He's done better than I expected. Would I personally keep him? No, but if we can get some sort of a cheap or a relatively easy deal with Atletico Madrid and another simple low with us paying his current salary. Again, there's no risk, so I wouldn't mind it per se. I think when we're spending money on Joao Felix, that's where I get really, really, really suspicious and we even if we chuck in a, a buy ob, um, buy option wouldn't mind a buy obligation that would be a bit concerning again depending on what the fee is but again with felix there's been a lot of reports now oh hansi flick believes in him love i think uh, this hansi flick stuff is really annoying me i feel like he's just coming in just agreeing with everything the board won just so he can coach the the team but with felix he's done better than i expected but i still don't think he's done enough in my opinion for Barcelona to really go out there and pursue and sign him i think we're gonna try Negotiate with Atletico Madrid. If we can keep him cool, if not, I think we're going to be cool. But with Cancelo, there is a bit more of an incentive because Pletigol of Sky Germany, again, the number one source in Germany, very close to Hansi Flick. He's come out saying that Hansi Flick wants Joao Cancelo to stay and the club is trying to find a solution. The idea right now is about extending his loan and more talks are scheduled in the next few weeks. I've said this about the two Joao's. I'm very, very clear that I'd rather keep Cancelo over Felix. I've seen a lot of people reacting to this. Oh, Cancelo, we shouldn't keep him. He's a defensive liability, blah, blah, blah. Mate, wake up and smell the coffee. Is he defensive liability? Yes, I would agree. The past, the last two months of the season, he was absolutely disgustingly bad. From August until March, he was our best player for crying out loud. Look at all the glazing everyone did for him in November, in October, in December, in January. One of the reasons why we lost the Super Cup was because Cancelo was injured. He was that integral to our team he was playing unbelievable well and you know why because he did not have too much uh, you know work to do defensively he had the players behind him Christensen, Kunde, Arujo who were all playing relatively okay but when as soon as they dropped off on form he did as well because he had to track back even more I think again Cancelo can be a very useful player he's a world-class fullback at both right back and left back available for a great price of 20 million euros for me it's a no-brainer when he came and started playing for Barcelona we're all comparing him to Danny Alves we've not had a fullback like him since Danny Alves and I still stand by that I think he's a brilliant player of course build up in the midfield as well outnumbering uh, uh, positional positional play moving forward as well creating chances in the final third yes defensively he isn't the best I think sometimes it's 50-50 I've seen him defend very well I think of course get turned over and drop multiple amount of times but if you can have him in a role as a fullback where defensive work isn't too much for him he's an absolutely brilliant signing and again for the price and for the formula as well it is a no-brainer. And if you do not sign Cancelo, you're going to have Julian Arujo, Alejandro Balde, Alex Valle, and Hector Fort. Like these are, these are, of course, good players that have potential, but not someone you can rely upon for a whole season when Cancelo is. You have to have some, some, some sort of experience in the fullback position. You just cannot go in there raw-dogging raw it with a bunch of youngsters. And again, Balde is coming off of a poor season as well. Of course, Hector Ford has had his good moments, but never played at right back. Julian Arujo had a poor last two months at Las Palmas, an overall good loan uh, there. 
who was the last one that I forgot to mention. You have Kunde Oken, who's been very consistent the whole entire season, but isn't, you know, really a natural fullback. I think he's much better as a center back, but that's just my opinion. I think, again, Hansi Flick wants him to stay. Again, if we can find a, a way to keep both the Joals for not relatively cheap, but I would say a relatively fair offer without not spending too much money. I personally would not mind it. So we'll wait and see how things turn out. But that is the big news that Barcelona will try and keep both the Joao's. I think emphasizing a bit more on the Cancela point of view. But again, it comes down to the formulas that are going to have to be agreed upon between Manchester City and Atletico Madrid respectively. Let's have discussed the players that have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours. First up, we have the relationship between Barcelona and Girona that's going to be in effect this summer. Now, Gabriel Sanz and Deportivo has come out saying that Barcelona and Girona are in talks regarding various players. Girona are interested in Eric Garcia, Pablo Torre, and Oye Romeu, while Barcelona's focus right now is on Pau Victor, the striker for Barca Athletic, who is having an unbelievable season. He scored a great goal last night against Ibiza as well in the qualification playoff uh, first leg. He's been sensational, but again, he's around 22 years old, so he's getting onto the older side for playing for Barca Athletic, but he's had a great season where Barcelona have to look at him. I think we have a 3 million euro buy option as well. Keep your eyes as well on Mikel Faye. Girona very interested in him, so there's going to be some sort of business uh, happening between the two clubs. Of course, no Alex Garcia now, since so he's going to be on the move to Bayern Leverkusen. As long as we can just ship Romeu, I'm a happy camper. I would say ship Romeu, see if we can get a sale for Eric Garcia, and also I would sell uh, Pablo Torre, but have us retain part of his future. Buyback option, percent of his future sale, anything like that. Now, quickly on Eric Garcia, Ivan San Antonio from Sport came out saying that Eric Garcia himself wants to return to Barcelona, but the club isn't currently prioritizing it. There's no meeting so far with the player. Flick will be one of the ones who determine the Spaniard's future. Our overbooking right now in the center back position is disgusting. You have Eric Garcia, Mikel Fey, Inigo Martinez, Andreas Christensen, Julian Arujo, not Julian Arujo, Ronald Arujo, Jules Koundé. I mean, you have come along like coming back from Lona as well. You have seven, seven center backs for where you only need four. I think Eric Garcia is a good player. I think he's had a good season where you would say, okay, you can come back to the first team like we know with Julian Arujo. He had a great load at Las Palmas. Bring him back. Let him see how he does. I think Eric Garcia has done enough to, you know, get a chance. But we have already an overbooking. It's the best time to catch out. He had a good season. Girona want him. They're going to be in Champions League. They want to have some sort of experienced player. I think Eric Garcia is good enough to be, you know, a fourth choice center back for Barcelona. But I just don't think right now it's going to work out in his favor. But... With Barcelona, you just never know. With no, with no Xavi, though, I think his situation is looking towards more the exit than he is saying. If Xavi was here, I would basically already consider Eric Garcia a first-team player. But we'll wait and see what happens with the relationship between Girona and Barcelona. There's going to be a lot of movements, whether they're going to be all package deals together or all separate operations. Both these two clubs will have, be involved in at least three or four players' futures this summer. Let's discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. Firstly, this really isn't, you know, updates per se, but this is just kind of, you know, pure news in the players speaking on their futures. And that is on Frankie de Jong and Ronald Arujo. We have some news and also them speaking on their current situation at Barcelona. Firstly, on Frankie de Jong, he was asked with the Dutch national team about staying at Barcelona and he said, yes, I'm very happy in Barcelona with my family for sure. Hansi Flick wants me to be key for the squad. I spoke to him. It was fine. After the Euros, we will see how things are with him. Following these quotes, Ayas Pantel from Relivo came out saying that Hansi Flick trusts Frankie de Jong a lot. We're going to hear nothing until July. I these, play these players have absolutely... Finesse Barcelona and credit to them. They're just trying to run down their contract, run down so they can have more power and more leverage in negotiation. First, let's wait until the end of the season. Oh, we have the Euros now. Let's wait till the end of the Euros. Preseason to come around. Oh, let's wait for the end of preseason. Oh, La Liga just started. Let's wait for the first international break. Oh, international break comes in. Let me go with my with my teammates and then we'll, we'll decide. They've played us like a fiddle and fair play to them. But again, he's saying he's happy. The club want to keep him. Again, he has had a, he's had a renewal offer on the table since about February and no response. But hopefully now with Flick coming in, maybe a new atmosphere, new encouragement, things can change. But what's clear is that Flick wants uh, De Jong to stay. He thinks De Jong is going to be an important player. And De Jong is saying that he's happy in Barcelona. And guess what? The same thing for Ronald Arujo. He was asked on staying in Barcelona. He said, look, I'm calm. I have a contract until 2026. My representatives will meet with the club to discuss, but now I'm focused on the national team. I had discovered in my knee, but now I'm 100% recovered. Physically, I'm fine. How convenient 
that you know he's had discovered his knee for about two months at Barcelona, but all of a sudden when it's you know time for Uruguay, he's completely fine. To be fair, he did miss out on the World Cup, so I don't really blame him uh, per se. But a bit of a different, you know, narrative from Frankie De Jong. So he, Frankie De Jong said, "Yes, I want to stay. I'm happy." He's saying, "I'm calm," and there's negotiations. So a bit of you know different perspective, but also. Flick wants him. Ivan San Antonio came out saying that Flick is 100% counting on Arujo for next season. He is key in the project. So, we'll wait and see. But again, like De Jong, Arujo playing us like a fiddle. He's trying to, you know, give us, he's trying to get more leverage by writing down his contract even more so. All I can say is this. Before La Liga kicks off on August the 16th, some sort of decision has to be made on both their futures. Either they're going to be sold or they got to renew. I mean, August the 16th for me is the last pure deadline i know that's like two months away i personally i would say hopefully before preseason remember last season we didn't let baldi or the many email go on preseason until they renewed their contracts they both did they went on the plane hopefully we can kind of do the same thing here with idaho and Dion, but they're big players so it might be different i don't know man but we gotta figure out their futures as soon as possible again they're both saying in the media openly and vocally that they want to stay but again like frankie de young i had an offer a renewal offer from barcelona since march has not responded whatsoever. So we'll wait and see how things turn out. But what's clear is that both players are making it, uh, you know, know that they want to stay at Barcelona. And also Hansi Flick thinks they're both integral to his project for next season. The final contract renewal update that we do have is on the contract renewal of the first team captain of Barcelona, Sergi Roberto. And this has been without a shadow of a doubt the biggest news around Barcelona over the past 24 hours. And it's not good for the Roberto side. Fernando Polo of Mundo Portivo has come out saying that Sergio Roberto's entourage is very pessimistic regarding his contract renewal. People close to him believe that the club's conditional offer for his renewal puts him in a vulnerable position and the best thing is to leave Barcelona. There's also some people in his entourage who believe that this condition is an elegant invocation for him not to continue. Bloody hell. Gabriel Sanz from Mundo Portivo also confirmed it and also added that Roberto is disgusted by his contract renewal getting slowed down and because of how everything has happened. The club had initially guaranteed him a renewal for one season regardless of Xavi's continuity. Deco and Boyan have explained to him why he is not a priority for the club and that his renewal would depend on the salary space at the end. Couple things here. Firstly, I'll tell you this right now for free. I think Roberto's still going to stay. I told you guys in the last video, 90% I think he'll stay. I think it's the same thing. Once the salary space comes out and they, the club realizes, oh, they got enough room for his peanut salary, they'll end up keeping him. What I'm not quite too happy about here is Roberto's entourage, you know, disgusted by how his renewal is so done. Are you not disgusted by his performances over the past two seasons? To be fair, last season he did play all right. But again, the two singular individual worst performances of last season came from this man, away at Villarreal, and at the time I met in the Copa del Rey, the two worst performances individually came from him, and he's out here talking about us being disgusting, you're staying as, you're basically staying, if he was not the captain, he would be gone, the only reason why he's here, and the club want to keep him, captain from Catalonia, oh we're gonna go to Spotify cap now, oh new coach coming in, uh, Roberto can speak fluent English, that will help with the integration process, which I can kind of, which I can kinda, uh, you know, agree with and attest to, but, him and his entourage moving like we're playing disgusting is not. You're not a priority. If we can keep you, great. If not, game is game. It is what it is. Now, Fabrizio Romano has come out saying that Sergio Roberto's situation at Barcelona will be clarified in the next few days with chances of him parting ways. After a verbal agreement on a new deal under Xavi, Barcelona are now taking their time also due to a financial fair play situation. Matias Marito came out saying that as things currently stand, Sergio Roberto is closer to leaving than staying. His camp have already started looking for exit options. Thanks, Einstein. As of right now, he's going to be leaving. Well, obviously, his contract is expiring and it's not renewed. Thanks, Einstein. I'll tell you guys this right now for free. I, I would be shocked if Roberto's not renewed. Again, I think the club want to keep him. I think Laporte is a bit admirer of him. They've already kind of, you know, disrespected Xavi a little bit. They don't want to disrespect, disrespect another, you know, uh, big name player at Barcelona, so to speak, you know, in history wise. Not, of course, right now per se. I think Roberto will wait for Barcelona as well. I think he'll honestly wait until the end of this month. If we don't renew him by the end of this month, I think maybe he'll go and move on. Uh, if he does move on, hopefully he goes to Inter Miami. I think that'll be a great move for him. Get the club, the amigos back in there. He'll be there for when they push for the, you know, uh, MLS trophy as well. It can be a great addition for them. Um, but we'll see how things turn out. Again, uh, him being close to the exit, I think, is, you know, wide out of the mark. That's just immediate trying to twist and turn his uh, the situation around. There's still, you know, three weeks left to get, to get it sorted out fully. Depending on FFP, again, we'll wait and see. But if we're getting the Nike deal over the line, Boris Division sale, there should be no problems whatsoever in renewing Roberto's contract 
in any capacity whatsoever. It really comes down to whether or not the club want to do it or not. Again, will Hansi Flick have an implication on this? I really don't think so. I think the club 100% want to keep him, keep him no matter what. Just now down to fitting him. Um, but... I think Roberto really wants to stay now, mainly because he wants to get his send-off next season at the Camp Nou. I think right now, does Roberto deserve a send-off? I would say so, yes. Maybe not like a huge packed stadium chanting his name, but you know, a little, you know, video uh, message saying thanks, and that's pretty much it. But we'll wait and see how things turn out. Again, I'm not too uh, worried about his future whatsoever. We'll wait and see how things turn out over the next few days, where Fabrizio Mona says that it will be decided and we will have clarity on his future. Let's now discuss some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past 24 hours. First, we do have an update on players being involved in preseason. Now, a big remontada here for Alex Valle. According to Gabriel Sanz and Monoportivo, Alex Valle will likely do preseason with the first team. He had Xavi's okay to stay, but his situation may change now under Hansi Flick. Now, again, if you keep Cancelo, you're going to keep Julian Arujo, you're going to keep Bola, you're going to keep Hector Ford. There is no need whatsoever to have Alex Valle. Yes, he's a good player. Yes, there's a lot of you know potential in him, but you already have your full your four full backs sorted at that point. So we'll wait and see if he gets on that plane or not. If he does, that means the club do trust him a lot. Maybe Hansi Flick wants to see him a bit more. Uh, he could be you know the Fermin Lopez of last season. You never know. But right now, the plan is to have him as part of the first team. But I still think, again, with the positions being really filled up in the fullback position, his future still very much in doubt. And kind of the same principle as well for the next player, and Mikal Faye. Now, Gabriel Sanz and Bruno Portivo came out saying that Barcelona assumed that they will receive some good offers for Mikal Faye this summer. Mikal Faye himself no longer plans to continue at Borussia Athletic and his future would be in the first team or through an exit while keeping control over him. The decision would be up to Hansi Flick. So again, like I told you guys two months ago, it's now becoming more clear. He ain't going to be part of Barca Athletic. He'll either be in the first team next season or we're going to sell him on. And if we do sell him on, we're going to have some sort of part in his future. Again, buyback option, percent of a future sale, whatever the case may be. Now, Matias Marito has also come out saying that Barcelona have a lot of belief in Mikel Faye's quality and wants him to be involved in the first team. He will no doubt do preseason, taking part in the U.S. tour this summer. Barcelona intend on keeping him, but when it comes to transfer plans, it could depend on the offers that come in for him. Barcelona have not set a price for him so far because they would rather hold on to the player if possible. Are we going into the next season with like eight center, center backs? Bloody hell. You're going to have Inigo, Christensen, Kunde, Arujo, Kubarsu, who I forgot to mention earlier on. You're going to have Mikal Faye, maybe Eric Garcia, Clement Loveless, that's no club. You're going to have eight effing center backs next season. Madre mia. The club needed the Hansi Lucky's to wake up and decide. This is why I'm kind of worried that we could see a big sale in the center back position. You know, Christensen, Arujo, Kunde, because we're just overbooked beyond belief. I think, the big, I think, again, for me, I would keep Kubarsi, of course, Christensen, Arujo, Kunde. Those four for me, guaranteed lock. I would choose between Mikal Faye and Inigo. I think Eric Garcia, ship him off to Girona. They are interested. They really like him. Sell him. Sayonara. If he, if he gets really good, we can bring him back in the future. Mikal Faye and Inigo, because they're what? They're both left footed and you need to have someone left footed in the first team again Inigo Martinez isn't registered right now so you can let him go for free no problem or you can trust Mikhail Faye that for me is the big decision what will Hansi Flick want youngster veteran good player uh great quality that can grow that's I think where the decision really lies so if you have Mikhail Faye Kubarsi Christensen Kunde Aruha as your center backs no problem whatsoever. You have four, uh, five center backs there, with one being able, of course, Christensen can play in the pivot. Kunde can play at right back as well. So they're going to be, you know, versatile players, so to speak. But Kyle Faye can do a job at left back as well. I've seen him play there a couple times with Barca Athletic. There you have some versatility. You have some good numbers there. So we'll wait and see how things turn out. Again, preseason is going to be absolutely effing huge, as it always is for players' futures and determination of what initial decision is going to be made by the first team manager. Now, Staying on center backs very quickly. This is the most dumb report I've seen in my life. Uh, Plenty goals come out saying that Hansi Flick plans to firmly include uh, Paul Kubarsi in his defense for the upcoming season. The coach sees him as an absolute key player for the future. Last time I checked, the sky is blue and the grass is green. I mean, I could have I could have reported this, but Mikhail Faye's future is the one that you really, really have to watch out for. Great player, sheer quality. So many clubs interested. I've seen Manchester United interested over the past 24 hours. I think Arsenal be like with him as well again Lunds from France Girona so many big clubs interested in him and again they're willing to pay a good price for him we spent I believe five million on Mikel Faye last summer easily double our money we could even potentially triple our money this summer so a way to see how things turn out with him but again all decisions for him will be made probably after preseason with the board and Hansi Flick 
Now the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is in regards to the squad planning for preseason and what Hansi Flick's initial plan currently is. According to Alex Pentel from Relivo, Hansi Flick is obsessed with fixing the physical condition of the players. He will focus mainly during the preseason and will assess using high level technology. Again, we've, we've known this for a long time now that physically this team isn't up to par with the elite level of football and also as well preventing from injuries as well. So hopefully Hansi Flick can come in and have a big implication on that, especially with the new uh, coaching staff coming in as well. Also, Hansi Flick wants to work on leaks. Now, this is a leak that's coming out about preventing leaks, but you know, take it as you will. Alfredo Martinez came out saying that Hansi Flick wants to protect his locker room and does not want any kind of leaks. He will warn all the players about this. The coach is characterized by using a cold person in his statement who does not link to appear who does not like to appear in the headlines. That is 100% true. Like I told you guys a few weeks ago, Hansi Flick does not hate the media, but he hates being involved in the media circus and wants to be, you know, as quiet as possible. This for me has been a big problem for the past two years. Stuff leaking left, right, and center lineups, player news, player fights, player controversy, manager situation. We leak like an absolute sieve and we need to patch that up. Hopefully with this Hansi Flick coming in, we can get the squad leaks reduced quite a bit. This has been a problem. So this is fantastic news for me, but like this is a leak talking about no more leaks. So take that as you will. And at Barcelona, there will always be leaks, but whether or not they're true or not, that's where you want to put, you know, that stop gap into place. So hopefully things can change in that regard. I think these are two big, big points from Hansi Flick physically as well, the squad, how we can, you know, improve and also on the leagues, two big things that we have to improve upon. Hopefully Hansi Flick can come in and have that implication. And finally, just some updates on Hansi Flick himself. Firstly, he is expected to have his presentation as a Barcelona manager before preseason begins around mid-July. So I think we're going to hit the plane to America on like July 20th. Something like that. So somewhere before that, he will have his presentation as a manager, stuff like that. I've seen a lot of people in the media very upset. Oh, I've been reporting on Barcelona for 30 years. I've never not seen a manager uh, be presented. Relax. He's going to be presented. They just want to announce him now. That way everyone knows the future of Xavi and also Hansi Flick as well. Again, presentation as the Barcelona manager will definitely be happening before preseason. And also, some leaks of his salary now. Pudigo has come out saying that Flick's salary at Barcelona is going to be 9 to 11 million gross plus potential bonuses now the initial salary was going to be 3 million net which means 6 million gross so this is of course saying that everyone in the Catalonia media Jordi Gil and Javi Miguel who both came out saying that Flick will earn 3 million net plus 1 million bonus for winning the Champions League and plus 750,000 for winning La Liga Flick uh Pedigo saying they're wrong he's going to be earning around 10 million gross which is about 5 million net so they're about 2 million off his current salary and of course bonuses included so Whatever Flick is earning, it's quite clear that it's going to be less than Xavi. So again, hopefully that will help us in regards to FFP, saving a couple million there as well. But again, everything in the media right now that Hansi Flick is portraying is right. You know, keeping Aduho, De Jong, and Cancelo, you know, trusting McAlefe, uh, wanting that pivot in the left wing, you know, physical improvement, uh, reduce the leaks. This is all, you know, clear. The question now is about the execution. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. But the main thing I want to know firstly is your thoughts on Barcelona keeping both the Joao's. Second, your thoughts on having Guerrero coming in and being an option in the pivot. Do you agree with my stance on it or would you rather, you know, uh, go for him? Thirdly, your thoughts on those three top players. Would you take any of them, both of them, all three of them? Let me know your thoughts. And finally, on the future of Sergio Roberto, what do you think will happen? And also, what do you want to happen as well? And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and force the Barca. Barca, Barca, Barca.